I have on my table here three different cylinder heads. Uh, they represent the three different versions or lives of my 289, if you will. Um, originally, I had my cast iron 289 heads. These were, these were the stock heads with very little modification. Um, next, uh, these are a set of 351 Windsor heads. Uh, these were ported, especially on the exhaust side, uh, oversized valves, um, stainless valves uh, with hardened seats and the 289 heads got hardened seats as well. And then on the right is my AFR uh, Renegade uh, 185 series head. So the valves on the 289 head, uh, the exhaust valve is like 152. Uh, 1.52 inches. The intake valve is about 1.84 inches. The combustion chamber is 52 cc's. On the 351 Windsor head, uh, I oversized the valves. It's a 1.6 exhaust valve and a 1.94 intake valve. It's the biggest intake valve I could go with on this particular combustion chamber. A larger valve will actually fit, but the side of the combustion chamber would shroud the valve and eliminate any advantage. So 1.94 is the biggest you can go here. It's a 64 cc combustion chamber. And then the AFR head, uh, 1.6 inch exhaust valve, 2.02 inch intake valve, um, and now on this particular head, I went with a larger combustion chamber. It's a 72 cc. Um, on on these earlier versions, both of these were high compression engines. Um, with the 52 cc head, it was almost 12 to one. With the 64 cc um, head, it was uh, somewhere in the uh, 10.8 to one range. And with the 72cc head and the new pistons on the Eagle rotating assembly, it's going to give me right at 10 to 1 compression ratio, um, which is what I was looking for. This is going to be a street driven engine. I'm going to have to be able to run it on pump gas. Uh, and so uh, although I could have uh, gained more horsepower by going with a smaller combustion chamber and higher compression, uh, that uh, comes at the cost of street ability. Um, this is going to be my toy. I'm going to drive it around a lot and I wanted to be able to use uh, pump gas with no issues whatsoever. Uh, and so 10 to 1 compression ratio is going to allow me to do that. So uh, the key though is uh, the shape of the combustion chamber and the size of the valves. It's a substantial improvement over the cast iron heads, both of them. You can also look at the deck surface and see the aluminum gives you a, just a nice, beautiful, uh, large surface. Um, the cast iron uh, heads, uh, just, uh, they're, they're production items. They're, they're rough cast and, and they're not meant for performance in any capacity. So I'm going to rotate it around and show you the exhaust ports. First we have the 289 stock head. Um, very, very small exhaust port. Uh, these have been opened up. These have been ported over stock. Uh, but not by much. The casting doesn't really allow you to do a whole lot with them um, before you risk uh, weakening the wall into a water jacket or into the combustion chamber. So uh, not much you can do there. Uh, this head did get screw-in studs and guide plates, roller rockers, uh, stud girdles, the whole works. The 351 Windsor head, uh, these heads are notorious for having in the middle of the exhaust port uh, something called the emissions nub. Uh, it's a really, really big uh, nub of casting material that uh, partially obstructs the exhaust port. Um, the port itself is larger than the 289 port, but uh, that nub in there uh, really negates that. So. 
Um, fortunately, it's just casting material and you can remove the entire nub without any risk of weakening the casting. And then you can port on top of that. So these, these ports are heavily ported over uh, stock to uh, help in, improve the flow. And again, um, uh, oversized valves, screw-in studs, guide plates, roller rockers, all of that stuff. Uh, when comparing the two cast iron heads, the 289 and the 351 Windsor head, to the AFR head, there really is no comparison. Um, this exhaust port is just massive in comparison, and it's straight. Um, in, in these two, uh, let me grab my flashlight here. So the exhaust valve is kind of obscured back there by the casting. Same in the 289 head. It's got a little bit of a curve to it as well. Not so uh, in the AFR head. It's a straight shot, the valve is right there, and it's a massive opening. And so, uh, again, there's no, no comparison uh, between the two here. Um, the, uh, exhaust valve on this Windsor head is the same size as the valve on the AFR head, uh, but this valve is limited in how much uh, can flow through it because of the port size. Um, this port is, is much larger uh, and it's CNC machined. So AFR has optimized the flow on the exhaust size. A dramatic improvement over stock. I'll uh, rotate them once more with regard to the valve train uh, all three are actually comparable in this respect um, all three have uh, screw-in studs and guide plates all three use uh, roller rockers uh, all three will have extended poly locks with stud girdles. Um, the stud girdles really help with valve, uh, valve train stability, especially at high RPMs. Uh, so this was an evolution with the 289 head. Originally it had the uh, press-in studs um, and um, the stock rocker arms. Uh, I broke rocker arms, I had studs uh, pop out, um, and so eventually over time, first they cut the screw-in studs and the guide plates, then it cut the roller rockers, uh, and then I was still having a little little problem, especially with valve float at high RPM. Uh, stiffer springs uh, cured that, and then the um, stud girdle just went on um, as added insurance. I, I would start having... Um, um, it would start to cut out somewhere around 7,000, 7,500 RPM thereabouts. Uh, every now and then I went higher. 289s will rev really, really high. Uh, mine's seen uh, 8,500 more than a couple times. Um, not always on purpose, but it's done it. Um, and every time I've broken something doing that, I've replaced it with uh, improved or more heavy duty components. And the AFR head uh, just continues that. Um, I called them, I gave them my cam specifications and a whole bunch of other information, and they matched not only the ports, but the valve size and the springs to my installation. Um, so uh, that's all gonna work uh, very well for me. Uh, rotate it once more and show you the intake ports. And so here we are on the stock 289 head. And again, I'll shine the flashlight down in there. Um, and it's difficult to see the valve. It is way back in there. There's not a lot you can do in porting the intake side on these heads. Um, you can do some, and, and I did. Uh, but mostly it centers around port matching with the gaskets. 
The 351 Windsor head ports are a little bit bigger, and again, the valve is, is uh, way back in there. Um, but it's a relatively straight shot. A uh, little larger port than the 289 head. So going from the 289 to the 351 Windsor, uh, I got bigger ports on both the intake and the exhaust side, um, and uh, I installed larger valves. So this was a pretty good performance upgrade um, without having to go through the expense of buying aftermarket heads. Um, it was just the cost of a rebuild, really. Uh, if you want to replace the valves with stock valves or oversized valves, um, the only difference is the cost of the valves themselves. Um, notice the water port is shaped differently on the 351 Windsor versus the 289. You've got to take that into account in making sure you use the correct gaskets for the intake, but that's really the only, um, the only difference there. Now the AFR head uses the early style rectangular water port like the 289 head. Um, but uh, again, like the, like the exhaust port, the intake port is just massive. Um, you can see the whole valve there versus um, catching a glimpse of it in the 351 Windsor head. You can see the whole thing clearly uh, in the AFR head. It is just a massive straight shot uh, directly at the intake valve. Uh, and so the AFR heads are a dramatic improvement over certainly the stock 289 heads and even the uh, larger port 351 Windsor heads. Um, and it's not just the AFR heads, the Trick Flow heads, the Edelbrock heads, uh, the Motorsport heads, uh, any of those are going to give you um, much uh, larger intake and exhaust ports and uh, better overall flow capabilities. You just have to make sure that you're careful about choosing components that work for your overall uh, operation um, or installation. Now the 289 heads uh, originally had 7 16 head bolt holes. Um, these 289 heads actually ended up on a 351 Windsor at one point to give it higher compression. Um, and it worked out pretty well. Uh, but that means these bolt holes have been opened up to seven six or to half inch from seven sixteenths. Um, the Windsor bolt holes were already half inch. That's normal for them. Uh, and then the AFR bolt holes also come half inch. And so in order to install any of these heads on a stock 289 block, you've got to use adapters, either adapter bolts or uh, the adapter washers that make up the difference between the half inch and 7 16 uh, bolt sizes. The only other uh, real difference, uh, early 289 and even early 302 heads have a water passage here. If you're looking at the top of the block, um, at the top of the piston towards the intake side, uh, there's a circular about a quarter inch diameter uh, water hole that corresponds with that particular slot. The 351 Windsor heads, I drilled a hole here that matches the same location on the block so that there would be that water passage on the 351 Windsor head. Now AFR does not put the hole there and they say that you don't need it. Um, I'm a little leery to try it out. Of course the internet tells me if I install them like this then I'm going to blow a head, head gasket in like three seconds but the internet says things like that all the time. If you if you um, base what you're doing solely on somebody's opinion in a chat room, you're never going to get anywhere. Um, I did call AFR. I did talk to the people on their tech line. They know exactly what I was describing when I told them about that particular water passage. And I told them that I had drilled it on my 351 Windsor head, which is a very common thing people do. They're fully aware of that and, and understand all of it. Uh, and they uh, say that you don't need to do it for their 
heads uh, and that everything will work fine if you don't. Um, so uh, they design these heads, they build them, they sell them, they race them, um, they, they know what they're doing. And so uh, I'm going to go with their, with their recommendation and uh, I guess we'll all see how that turns out. But uh, when, you, uh, when you build an engine, keep in mind you don't have to go to the extreme with your first uh, engine or your first attempt. Uh, you can go progressive and start with what you've got and let it evolve over time. When you, you know, like the famous line from the movie goes, when you break it, you got to fix it faster. So start with what you got. I did with my 289 heads and they grew and then they got improved until I, they could only take me so far. And then I couldn't afford aluminum heads. So I got a 351 Windsor head uh, or pair of heads and um, put some oversized valves and, and a lot of elbow grease into porting them and they worked very very well for me for many years um, and now I'm in a position where I was able to uh, spend a little bit more money uh, and so we're, we're just going to evolve um, and see where the AFR heads take us. Uh, but um, a lot of people, when they first want to get into building a hot rod or building their first hot rod or, or rebuilding their first engine, they want to go straight to here because this is what's in all the books and magazines and this is what's in all the car shows on TV. And, uh, you know, this is a great place to be, but it's also perfectly fine to start out here or here on your way to here. Uh, so all three have advantages and all three have disadvantages, um, but they will all work and they will all work very effectively. And believe me, they all sound the same when that engine is uh, loping at idle uh, at the cruise night. So um, keep that in, in mind. If you're, if you're just going to cruise around in it, um, that's probably a little more extreme than what you need. This is probably a little bit more appropriate, but if you are going to do some competition stuff with it, then, then you can definitely look over, um, at a, at a more, um, expensive, uh, option. But, uh, those are the three evolutions of my 289, which I keep telling, calling it a 289, but it was a 289 here and it was a 289 here, but now it's a 347 with, um, pretty, pretty large aluminum heads. And I'm really excited to see what kind of power I'm going to get out of that combination. Um, so that's a little talk on heads. <laughs>